Okay, and uh, this video we'll be dealing with the straw man arguments of Christianity as we see outside this church. Um, who is my neighbor? Which is actually with a question that the Jews asked, by the way. Um, but I know this is meant to be depicting a parable, but these are straw men. And that the false teaching, the main straw man of Christianity is that the law is done away, which is absolute garbage. Okay, absolute, absolute filthy lies, okay, from Satan. So let's just go through some of these 613 laws that the Christians say has been done away, quote unquote. Now this is about God. To note that God exists, Exodus um, 22, Deuteronomy 5, 6. Not to entertain the idea that there are any God but Him, Exodus 23. Not to blaspheme, Exodus 22, 27. To hallow God's name, Leviticus 22, 32. Not to profane God's name, Leviticus 22, 30, uh, 32. Um, not to know um, that God is one, okay? Um, especially Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That God is one, Deuteronomy 6, 4. To love God, Deuteronomy 6, 5. To fear Him reverently, just Deuteronomy 6, 13 and 10.20, not to put the word of God to the test, Deuteronomy 6.16, to imitate his good and upright ways, Deuteronomy 28.9, okay, and we go on, these are all of course from the Torah, to honour the old and wise, Leviticus 19.32, to learn the Torah and teach it, Deuteronomy 6.7, what an abomination that would be in Christendom, um, to cleave to those who know him, Deuteronomy 10.20, so those who have professed faith in, in Yeshua, you know, to honour them, not to throw them out of your church, you know. Um, not to add to the commandments of the Torah, um, okay, or take away from the commandments of the Torah, um, found in Deuteronomy 13.1. Um, again, that's mentioned in the book of Revelation, those that add to this book, the plagues will be added to them, take away from the book, their place in the kingdom. God's kingdom will be taken from them. Every person shall write a scroll of the Torah for himself, Deuteronomy 31, 19. Even if that's just um, a portion, a Torah portion, you know, um, in a mezuzah or something like that. Of course, these are terms that um, general Christians have no idea of. May as well be speaking Chinese. Um, we will continue. Signs and symbols. To circumcise male offspring, Genesis 17:12, Leviticus 12:3. Now, this is one of the commandments um, which was relaxed for the Gentile believers. The rest of them, as we've just read out, have not been relaxed. Okay, they've not been. Okay, you can argue all day to your blue in the face. There's nowhere in the New Testament um, that says that you shouldn't learn the Torah and teach it. You know. Um, honor God's name and so on and so forth. This is the first one we've come to that um, has been relaxed for the Gentiles. Doesn't mean to say that it's done away. It's a choice that the Gentiles have if they want to circumcise themselves or not. Okay. Um, to put tzitzit in the corner of your clothing. Numbers 15, 30, uh, 38. Um, to bind to fill in on the head. Deuteronomy 6, 8. To bind to fill in on the arm, Deuteronomy 6 8 again, to affix the mezuzah to the doorposts and gates of your house, Deuteronomy 6 9. Again, these are physical laws, um, the Jews obviously still do them, um, seemingly commanded in, in the Torah, in the Word of God, okay? Um, so it's, it's not a sin to do them, okay? If you decide to do them, it's not sinful, okay? Um, Basically, what God is concerned with is your inward circumcision. Um, just like your inward um, conversion is more important than your outward baptism. You know, your your inward convert. It's just a sign, as, as we discussed the other day. Um, your decision for Christ um, and then getting baptized is just an outward sign of your inward repentance. And um, it's the same with circumcision. Um, Abraham first of all gets circumcised in his heart and then he gets circumcised in his flesh. Some Gentiles will be circumcised and have been circumcised after they've came to faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, But we all don't have to, it's not a requirement anymore to be saved. Okay, But the rest of them are. Okay, The rest of them are. If, if you dwell in the Lord and in the Holy Spirit, 
then all these laws I'm, I'm actually reading out are going to come very naturally to you as you've renewed your nature. Um, Christ has basically crucified your old man on the cross, which is your sin, your sinful man. And then when you're baptized in God's name, you receive the Holy Spirit. And these laws are actually written on your heart so they should be second nature or even first nature to you um, to actually do these commandments. Okay, prayer and blessing. To pray to, to Yahweh, Exodus 23, 25, Deuteronomy 6, 13. To read the Shema in the morning and at night, Deuteronomy 6, 7. To recite grace after meals, Deuteronomy 8, um, 10. Uh, you know, it says as after meals, Christianity normally has them before meals, but again, that's that's their own law. It's not found in the Torah. Um, not to lay down a stone for worship. Okay. Leviticus 26, 1. So there we are. Okay, continuing with this. Um, of course, you must love God with all your heart. And now, this is how to love your neighbor or the brotherhood. To love all human beings who are of the covenant. Leviticus 19, 18. Not to stand by idly when human life is in danger. Leviticus 19, 16. Not to wrong anyone in speech. Leviticus 25, 17. Not to carry tales. Leviticus 19, 16. Not to cherish hatred in one's heart. Leviticus 19, 17. Not to take revenge. Leviticus 19, 18. Not to bear a grudge. Leviticus 19, 18. Not to put any Jew to shame. Leviticus 19, 17. Not to curse any other Israelite. Leviticus 19, 14. Not to give occasion for simple-minded to stumble. Leviticus 19, 14. Um... This obviously includes um, doing anything to cause anyone to sin. To rebuke the sinner, Leviticus 19.17. To relieve a neighbor of his burden and help um, to unload his beast, Exodus 23.5. Just basically to help your neighbor and to carry their messages, let's say. To assist in replacing the load upon a neighbor's beast, Deuteronomy 22.4. Not to leave a, a beast that has fallen down um, beneath his burden, unaided um, Deuteronomy 22 4 okay very very simple and um, you can relate that to today's life of course as well today's humanity now let's go to the poor and unfortunate not to afflict an orphan or a widow Exodus 22 21 not to reap the entire field Leviticus 19 9 Leviticus 23 22 to leave the unreaped corner of the field or orchard for the poor Leviticus 19 9 not to gather gleanings, that's ears, and um, fall into the ground while reaping, Leviticus 19.9. To leave the gleanings for the poor, Leviticus 19.9. Um, to gather um, Olaf, which is in perfect clusters of the vineyard, Leviticus 19.10. To leave Olaf, the imperfect clusters of the vineyard for the poor, um, Leviticus 19.10, Deuteronomy 24.21. Not to gather the perit which is the grapes which have fallen to the ground, Leviticus 19.10 to leave parrot, which is the grapes, on the vineyard for the poor, Leviticus 19.10 not to return to take a forgotten sheaf, um, Deuteronomy 24.19 this applies to all fruit trees, Levi um, Deuteronomy 24.20, Deuteronomy 24.19 and to leave the forgotten sheaves for the poor, Deuteronomy 24.19-20 not to refrain from maintaining a poor man and giving him what he needs, Deuteronomy 15.7 and to give charity according to one's means, Deuteronomy 15.11 Treatment of the Gentiles, to love the stranger, Deuteronomy 10.19 not to wrong the stranger in speech, Exodus 22.20 not to wrong the stranger in buying or selling, Exodus 22.20 not to intermarry with the Gentiles, that's basically um, being you know unequally yoked, the apostle Paul talks about that. Teaches on this from the Torah, Deuteronomy seven three, to extract debt from an alien. Um, that's not a extraterrestrial, by the way. That's just okay. Um, that's a foreigner, bet by the way, Deuteronomy fifteen three, um, to lend to the alien at interest, Deuteronomy twenty three twenty one. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, that particular law is about vows, so they've obviously tied that into contracts concerning the lending of money, which is definitely your your banking laws right there. Um, that's a very controversial one. Um, so again, 
um, just watch what you're signing um, and, and these banks so let's move on by the way if any of you are struggling on a mortgage debt or anything else you, all, you always need two witnesses before you sign anything that's Torah law and um, banks just don't do that anymore because they know that people don't live by the Torah um, but you can actually um, talk about common law in courts which actually defends your rights uh, which, a lot, which a lot of lawyers have actually been doing um, rescuing people's property and so on. That's a different subject for a different time. So, okay, laws concerning marriage and divorce and family to honour your father and, father and mother, Exodus 20.12. Not to smite your father and mother, Exodus 21.15. Not to curse father or mother, Exodus 21.17. Um, to reverently fear father and mother, Levit Leviticus 19.3. To be fruitful and multiply, Genesis 1.28. A eunuch shall not marry a daughter of Israel, Deuteronomy 23.2. That a masmer shall not marry the daughter of a Jew, Deuteronomy 23.3. That an Ammonite or Moabite shall never marry the daughter of an Israelite, Deuteronomy 23.4. Of course, unless they're born again. Yeah. Not to exclude um, a descendant of Esau from the community of Israel for three generations, Deuteronomy 23.8-9. Not to exclude an Egyptian from the community of Israel for three generations, Deuteronomy 23, 8, 9. There shall be no harlot in Israel, that is, that there shall be no intercourse with a woman without previous marriage, with the deed of marriage and formal declaration of marriage. Okay, um, That's called a ketuvah. That's actually the marriage contract. Deuteronomy 23, 18. Um, to take a wife by um, Kiddushin, um, the sacrament of marriage, Deuteronomy 24.1 um, That the newly married husband shall be free for one year to rejoice with his wife, Deuteronomy 24.5 uh, How they would just love to rush you off for a nice old war in the Middle East Not let you have you know a year with your wife um, That a bridegroom shall be exempt for a whole year from taking part in any public labour such as military service, guarding the wall and similar duties, Deuteronomy 24.5 not to withhold food, clothing, and conjugal rights from a wife, Exodus 21.10, that the woman suspected, suspected of adultery shall be dealt with as prescribed in the Torah, Numbers 5.30, that one who defames his wife's honour by falsely accusing her of unchastity before marriage must live with her all his lifetime, Deuteronomy 22.19. That a man may not divorce his wife concerning whom he has published an evil report, Deuteronomy 22.19. To divorce by a formal written document, Deuteronomy 24.1. That one who divorces his wife shall not remarry her um, if after the divorce she has been married to another man, Deuteronomy 24.4. Well, I don't know if uh, Benny Hinn remar remarried his ex-wife, didn't he? I don't know about that. Um, that a widow whose husband died childless must not be married to anyone but her deceased husband's brother, Deuteronomy 25.5. Um, to marry the widow of a brother who has died childless, in Deuteronomy 25.5. Um, so that's basically to raise up offspring for the brother, which is not practiced again in Christendom. Don't do it in Christendom. That the widow um, formally um, release the brother in law. Okay. Deuteronomy 25, 7-9 All good laws, actually What's wrong with these laws? Why don't they keep them in the church anymore? Somebody explain this to me We'll wrap this one up with about the first hundred laws here With sexual relations, forbidden sexual relations Which are found in Leviticus 18 6, with any family member um, One's mother, one's father Father's wife, sister, father's wife's daughter Son's daughter, daughter's daughter um, incest with one's daughter, specifically in Torah, father's sister, mother's sister, father's brother's wife, father's brother, son's wife, brother's wife, one's wife's daughter, daughter of one's son, daughter of one's wife's daughter, one's wife's sister, um, woman with her menstrual period, with another man's wife, uh, Leviticus 18.20, saw them with a male, 18.22, Intercourse with a beast, 1823. Shall not have intercourse with a beast, 1823 again. And not castrate anyone of any species, any beast or person. Okay, these laws are still, still to be observed, by the way. Thanks for listening.